So the constraint layout is a view group that allows you to position and size widgets in a flexible way. It's similar to relative layout in that all views are laid out according to relationships between sibling views and the parent layout. So you want to be a professional Android app developer, but you don't know where you should start, what things you should learn, you came to the right place. Welcome to our top bestseller Android app development course, a comprehensive program designed to equip you with the skills and knowledge required to excel in the exciting field of Android app development. But it's more flexible than relative layout and easier to use with Android Studio's layout editor. All the power of constraint layout is available directly from the layout visual tools, the layout editor visual tools, because the layout API and the layout editor were specially built for each other. So you can build your own layout with constraint layout entirely by drag and dropping instead of editing the XML. This is a very power, very important and very powerful feature that was introduced in Android Studio. The constraint layout, I consider it is a very big uh, uh, and a very big step in advancing the coding career and the coding process of developers. It facilitates more and more in coding and especially in UI and design. Constraints. To define a view's position in constraint layout, you must, you must at least add one horizontal and one vertical constraint for the view. This is very important point. Again, guys, you must add at least one horizontal and one vertical constraint for each view. Each constraint represent, represents a connection or alignment to another view, the parent view or an invisible guideline. As this image shows, we are adding a constraint to the image view. Although a missing constraint won't cause a compilation error, the layout editor indicates missing constraints as an error in the toolbar. Drag a view from the polyte window into the editor. Click a constraint handle and drag it to the to available anchor point, exactly like this image, and click one of the create connection plus sign buttons in the layout selection or section of the attributes. Don't worry, we're going to practice it many in the next videos and we will see it in all of our applications. So don't worry if you don't understand it. I'm just making the steps, I'm making the lecture and this presentation in order to be a document uh, available for you in order to go, to, uh, to go back later on and return back later on if you missed anything okay this is the plus sign that i am talking about deleting the constraints click on a constraint to select it and then press delete press and hold ctrl and the command on mac, mac os so ctrl uh, with uh, in windows on windows and mac uh, os we use the command and then click on the constraint anchor. Note that the constraint turns red to indicate that you can click to delete it. Okay, we have seen this in the previous videos, but don't worry, we will go through all of these steps, all of these adding, deleting, and uh, drag and drop uh, operations in next videos. Opposing constraints, if you add opposing constraints on a view, the constraint lines become squiggly like a spring indicate to indicate the opposing forces exactly like this. So you can see the spring when we add, drag and drop this circle, 
this opposing opposing constraint so it becomes spring okay in the next video we'll continue with the constraint layout hello my friends let's continue with the constraint layout you can use constraints to achieve different types of layout behavior the first behavior is the parent position constraint the size of a view of a view to the corresponding edge of the layout in this figure the left side of the view is connected to the left edge of the parent layout you can define the distance from the edge with margin the second behavior is the order position we can define the order of appearance of two views either vertically or horizontally in this figure b is constrained to always be to the right of a and c is constrained below a however these constraints do not imply alignment so b can still move up and down the third behavior is the alignment align the edge of a view to the sa same edge of another view in this figure the left side of b is aligned to the left side of a if you want to align the view centers create a constraint on both sides you can offset the alignment by dragging the view inward from the constraint for example if you see the image on the right well it shows you that b uh, shows b with a 424 dp offset alignment the offset is defined by the constraint views margin you can also set all the views you want to align and then click align in the toolbar to select the alignment type four the fourth behavior is the baseline alignment align the text baseline of a view to the text baseline of to another uh, of another view okay so in this figure we can see that the first line of b is aligned with the text in a to create a baseline uh, constraint right click on the text view you want to constraint and then click show baseline then click on the text baseline and drag the line to the another baseline don't worry we'll see these uh, behaviors in the next videos so i want from you to focus on these behavior take notes and we'll see it later on constraint to guideline you can add a vertical or horizontal guideline to which you can constrain views and the guideline will be invisible to app users you can position the guideline with the layout based on either dp units or percent relative to the layout's edge to create a guide guideline you can click guidelines in the toolbar and then click add vertical or add horizontal guideline option constraint to barrier similar to guideline a barrier is an invisible line that you can constrain views to it except a barrier does not define its own position instead the barrier position moves based on the position of a views contained within this is useful when you want to constrain a view to the set of a views rather than to one specific view again please guys don't be frustrated if you don't understand anything please take the notes for the layout behavior in your copybook and we will see these behaviors later on through the applications and through the next videos don't worry the constraint bias when you add a constraint to both sides of a view and the view size for the same dimension is either fixed or wrap content the view becomes 
centered between the two constraints with a bias of 50% by default. You can adjust the bias by dragging the bias slider in the attributes window or by dragging the view. The view size. You can use the corner handles to resize a view, but this hard code the codes at the sides this hard code the, the size and so the view will not resize for different content or size of the screen to select a different sizing mode click a view and open the attributes window on the right side of the editor you will get this for the layout uh, panel the layout attributes when selecting a view, the attributes window includes controls for one for the size ratio. This is the triangle one, one, one to one, one to nine, uh, uh, nine to 16, 16 to nine, and so on. Number two, deleting constraints. Three, the height width mode. Four, the margins. Five, the constraint bias you can also highlight individual constraints in the layout editor by clicking on them in the six constraint list you can change the way the height and width are calculated by clicking the symbols indicated with call out three let's see these symbols you can see the fixed you specify a Specific dimension in the text box below or by resizing the view in the editor. These, these three arrows for wrapping content, the view expands only as much as needed to fit its content. This spring is match constraint. The view expands as much as possible to meet the constraints on each side after accounting for the views margin. However, you can modify the behavior with the following attributes and values. So congratulations, guys. You are ready now to start using the constraint layout and you can refer to these videos, this video and the previous video as a documentation for defining and uh, reviewing some uh, concepts in the constraint layout. So let's start working with this amazing feature.